Hello, Lavka English students. I hope you're having a great day. Today, we're going to be reading this text for a weekly checkpoint. Okay, the text is called The Japanese Quince. The author is John Galsworthy. Here we go. As Mr. Nilsson, well known in the city, opened the window of his dressing room on Camden Hill, he experienced a peculiar sweetest, Swedish sensation in the back of his throat and a feeling of emptiness just under his fifth rib. Hooking the window back, he noticed that a little tree in the square gardens had come out in blossom and that the thermometer stood at 60. Perfect morning, he thought, spring at last. Resuming some meditations on the price of Tintos, he took up an ivory-backed hand glass and scrutinized his face. His firm, well-colored cheeks with their neat brown mustaches and his round, well-opened, clear gray eyes wore a reassuring appearance of good health. Putting on his black frock coat, he went downstairs. In the dining room, his morning paper was laid out on the sideboard. Mr. Nielsen had scarcely taken it in his hand when he again became aware of that queer feeling. Somewhat concerned, he went to the French window and descended the scrolled iron steps into the fresh air. A cuckoo clock struck eight. Half an hour to breakfast, he thought. I'll take a turn in the gardens. He had then to himself... He had them to himself and proceeded to pace the circular path with his morning paper clasped behind him. He had scarcely made two revolutions, however, when it was borne in on him that instead of going away in the fresh air, the feeling had increased. He drew several deep breaths, having heard deep breathing recommended by his wife's doctor, but they augmented rather than diminish the sensation, as of some Swedish liqueur in course with him, together with a faint aching just above his heart. Running over what he had eaten the night before, he could recollect no unusual dish, and it occurred to him that it might possibly be some smell affecting him. But he could detect nothing except a faint, sweet, lemony scent, rather agreeable than otherwise, which evidently emanated from the bushes budding in the sunshine. He was on the point of resuming his promenade when a blackbird close by burst into song. And looking up, Mr. Nielsen saw at a distance of perhaps five yards a little tree in the heart of whose branches the bird was perched. He stood staring curiously at this tree, recognizing it for that which he had noticed from his window. It was covered with young blossoms, pink and white, and little bright green leaves, both round and spiky. And on all this blossom and these leaves, the sunlight glistened. Mr. Nielsen smiled. The little tree was so alive and pretty. And instead of passing on, he stayed there, smiling at the tree. Morning like this, he thought, and here I am, the only person in the square who has the to come out and, but he had no sooner conceived this thought than he saw quite near him a man with his hands behind him who was also staring up and smiling at the little tree. Rather taken aback, Mr. Nielsen ceased to smile and looked furtively at the stranger. It was his next door neighbor, Mr. Tandrum, well known in the city who had occupied the adjoining house for some five years. Mr. Nilsson perceived at once the awkwardness of his position, for being married, they had not yet had an occasion to speak to one another. Doubtful as to his proper conduct, he decided to at last murmur, fine morning, and was passing on when Mr. Tandrum answered, beautiful for the time of year. Detecting a slight nervousness in his neighbor's voice, Mr. Nilsson was emboldened to regard him openly. He was of about Mr. Nilsson's own height, with firm, well-colored cheeks, 
neat brown mustaches, and round, well-opened, clear gray eyes. And he was wearing a black frock coat. Mr. Nielsen noticed that he had his morning paper class behind him as he looked up at the little tree and visited somehow by the feeling that he had been caught out, he said abruptly. Er, uh, can you give me the name of that tree? Mr. Tandrum answered. I was about to ask you that and stepped towards it. Mr. Nielsen also approached the tree. Sure to have its name on, I should think, he said. Mr. Tandrum was the first to see the little label close to where the blackbird had been sitting. He read it out. Japanese quince. Ah, said Mr. Nielsen, thought so. Early flowerers. It's a hard word to say. Very, assented Mr. Tandrum and added, quite a feeling in the air today. Mr. Nielsen nodded. It was a blackbird singing, he said. Blackbirds, answered Mr. Tandrum. I prefer them to thrushes myself. More body in the note. And he looked at Mr. Nelson in an almost friendly way. Quite, murmured Mr. Nelson. These exotics, they don't bear fruit. Pretty blossom. And he again glanced up at the blossom thinking, nice fellow this, I rather like him. Mr. Tandrum also gazed up at the blossom, and the little tree, as if appreciating their attention, quivered and glowed. From a distance, the blackbird gave a loud, clear call. Mr. Nelson dropped his eyes. It struck him suddenly that Mr. Tandrum looked a little foolish, and as if he had seen himself, he said, I must be going in. Good morning. A shade passed over Mr. Tandrum's face as if he, too, had suddenly noticed something about Mr. Nielsen. Good morning, he replied, and clasping their journals to their backs, they separated. <clears throat> Mr. Nielsen retraced his steps toward his garden window, walking slowly so as to avoid arriving at the same time as his neighbor. Having seen Mr. Tandrum mount his scrolled iron steps, he ascended his own in turn. On the top step, he paused. With the slanting spring sunlight darting and quivering into it, the Japanese quince seemed more living than a tree. The blackbird had returned to it and was chanting out his heart. Mr. Nilsson sighed. Again, he felt that queer sensation, that choky feeling in his throat. The sound of a cough or sigh attracted his attention. There in the shadow of his French window stood Mr. Tandrum, also looking forth across the gardens at the little quince tree. Unaccountably upset, Mr. Nielsen turned abruptly into the house and opened his morning paper.